That's him running toward the U.S. Capitol alongside the vanguard of rioters who first attacked and overran police. What exactly was the role of Ray Epps in the chaos of January 6th? The theory, Epps, a former member of the Oath Keepers, was an FBI informant who incited the crowd on January 6th, bubbled up from a right-wing news site called Revolver News. Mm -hmm. According to a new investigation from Revolver, Epps may have led the breach team that first entered the Capitol on January 6th. The convoluted conspiracy theory made its way to Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. That's him running toward the U.S. Capitol alongside the vanguard of rioters who first attacked and overran police. Everybody got that? These people have such disdain for your intelligence that they will literally start out this clip with Ray Epps inciting a riot, then immediately slap the convoluted right-wing conspiracy theory label on it. Do they even know the definition of the word convoluted? It means something that's extremely complex and difficult to follow. But this, on the other hand, is not at all difficult to follow. Before we go any further, do you even know who Ray Epps is? A community poll I ran today shows a surprisingly high number of people who don't know who he is. I wouldn't be surprised because our media has done its best to sweep him under the rug. He's a man who was recorded on video for multiple days inciting a riot and for people to enter the Capitol on January 6th. The video evidence is damning, combined with his own testimony in which he admits to orchestrating the riot. Holy Look at all this damage! Somehow, none of this ever resulted in Ray Epps being arrested or charged with anything. What the fuck? To make things about Ray Epps even stranger, the Democrats, the media, and elements of our government who have a bloodthirsty hate for anything related to January 6th, even comparing it to the Civil War, those same people now portray Ray Epps as a sympathetic victim. Have been left in ruins. Good. God. We'll dive right into this ridiculous 60 Minutes interview, but first check out this free coin offer from Noble Gold. The second and third largest bank runs in history happened last month. The government is taking steps to guarantee all deposits. That means more money printing. Plus, the Fed is sitting on unrealized losses of around 1.2 trillion on their 8.3 trillion bond portfolio. And the Fed will continue to raise interest rates even if they tank the economy. Thousands have approached Noble Gold Investments to secure their wealth with gold. Gold is the most stable asset outside of government control. Hurry and go to noblegoldinvestments.com to secure your wealth. Bag a free five ounce America the Beautiful coin if you qualify. noblegoldinvestments.com that's noblegoldinvestments.com. You can find the link to that in the description or pinned comment. If you call, make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. And remember, there's always risk in investment, and there are no guarantees of any kind. At six foot four in his desert camouflage, bright red Trump hat, and military style backpack, Ray Epps stood out from the crowd on January 6th. Yeah, maybe that's because he was in a Trump supporter costume. What do you think when you see this now? It brings back some bad memories. It's hard to see our capital under attack. What the fuck? I'm sorry, what? You are literally the only one on video for multiple days literally telling people to enter the Capitol. But this is just a little preview of how he's gonna play this. As the victim and the people he blames are gonna be all the same targets that the media and Democrats always blame. What exactly was the role of Ray Epps in the chaos of January 6th? The theory, Epps, a former member of the Oath Keepers, was an FBI informant who incited the crowd on January 6th, bubbled up from a right-wing news site called Revolver News. What are you talking about? It didn't bubble up from a right-wing news site? We have multiple videos of Ray Epps inciting crowds to enter the Capitol, which 60 Minutes shows themselves multiple times. According to a new investigation from Revolver, Epps may have led the breach team that first entered the Capitol on January 6th. The convoluted conspiracy theory made its way to Capitol Hill. Seriously, what is going on here? Because 60 Minutes literally started out this entire piece by admitting that Ray Epps was with the quote, vanguard that first entered the Capitol premises. It's not the Proud Boys who engage in the initial breach, it's Ray Epps at that precise moment. How did Ray Epps know that there were gonna be pipe bombs? Ms. Sadburn, who is Ray Epps? 
That question has animated Fox News host Tucker Carlson for nearly two years. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to that clip of Ted Cruz where they cut it off before the FBI agent answered the question. Ms. Sadburn, Ms. who is Ray Epps? I'm aware of the individual, sir. Uh, I don't have the specific background to him. <laughs> well, there are a lot well, of people who are understandably very concerned, concerned about, about Mr. Epps. About Mr. Epps. Mm-hmm. On the night of January 5th, 2021, Epps wandered around the crowd that had gathered, and there's video out there of him chanting, tomorrow, we need to get into the Capitol, into the Capitol. This was strange behavior, so strange that the crowd began chanting, Fed, Fed, yeah, Fed, the crowd Fed, 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 Fed. Ms. Sandburn, was Ray Epps a Fed? Sir, I cannot answer that question. <laughs> the next day, the next day, on January 6th, they didn't want to show you this. She doesn't know. She's saying she can't answer it. Carlson has focused on Epps more than 20 times on his top-rated show, a half dozen times so far this year. He's obsessed with me. He's going to any means possible to destroy my life. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Now you're blaming Tucker Carlson for your own actions. Well, there's lots of people out there whose lives are now ruined for doing much less. The media spent an awful lot of time on the QAnon shaman, and he's now out of prison because the FBI and the government purposely withheld footage that would have exonerated him. So now these are the same people that we're supposed to trust as telling us the truth about Ray Epps and his involvement in all of this. So you can see where this is going. They're basically just going to throw out the word right wing as many times as they can to deflect from the fact that the guy that they're interviewing is the only person on video for multiple days inciting a riot and telling people to go into the Capitol and that somehow was never arrested and was never charged. Meanwhile, grandmas with cancer who did nothing other than just walk in, say some things and then walk out are literally sitting in prison for it. Not only that, but we've gone through multiple years of the media hardcore going after anybody associated with January 6th. But now when it comes to this one guy, they're treating him as some kind of a victim. And it's no mistake that all the arguments he's going to use for the reasons he did what he did are all going to be the exact same things you hear come from the mouths of Democrats and their mouthpieces in the media. To shift blame on somebody else. What are you talking about? If you look at it, Fox News, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Ted Cruz, Gates, they're all telling us before this thing that it was stolen. Epps, once a loyal Fox News watcher, told us he doesn't understand how he got cast as the villain. It's really quite simple. You're the guy on video inciting the riot that led to January 6th, and yet you haven't been charged with anything, while people who did nothing but walk around and then leave are sitting in prison right now. Epps went to Washington with his 36-year-old son and almost immediately stepped into trouble. You see, here again, they're trying to cast him as some sort of hapless victim, when in reality, he was the trouble. The conspiracy theory starts here, the night of January 5th. Give me one minute, give me one minute. On the streets of DC, tensions were running high at a pro-Trump rally being live streamed on the internet. The Marine veteran tried to take charge. What? He took charge? If by that you mean that's when he began inciting a riot, then yeah, he took charge. Hey, so oh, I'm going to put it out there. I'm probably going to go to jail for a day. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! No! He's fully dead, 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 dead. When you said, we have to go into the Capitol, we have to go into the Capitol, what what were you thinking? I said some stupid things. Uh Uh-oh, spaghetti The first Capitol Police officer goes down. Very quickly, they do gloss over this, but it does appear to be one of the protesters that helps the officer. As closely as you can remember, what exactly did you say to him? Dude, we're not here for that. The police aren't the enemy. Why didn't you stop to help this police officer who was who was knocked over? 
when she was knocked down and I started to go towards her to help her up and I saw a billy club over here in the corner of my eye and I thought, you know, they're gonna think I'm part of this. Excuse me. What? So I backed off. You were part of it. I was there. <laughs> And he wasn't part of the violence. There's a big difference there. Of course! Oh, what a surprise! It's different when he did it, except he was involved in the violence. As this video shows, he was taking part in the mob that was pushing on the gates. He told us that's when he sent this text to his nephew. Conspiracists saw it as the true confession of an agent provocateur. I was in front with a few others. I also orchestrated it. Explain this to me. I was boasting to my nephew. I, I was directing people to the Capitol that morning. You know how this sounds. I know exactly how it sounds. I've been scolded by my wife. Excuse me. What? So let me just get this straight. He said some stupid things and he was scolded by his wife for inciting a riot that turned into a so-called insurrection on January 6th. Do any of you think that if you were in the same position that you could somehow get out of charges from the FBI with these excuses? If Ray Epps was a covert plant, he is the worst covert plant of all time. Exactly. That's why this is all so obvious. Tom Jocelyn is a researcher and author, one of the country's top terrorism experts, tapped by the January 6th committee to help write its final report. The idea that he's leading the charge or really orchestrating it is just contradicted by this mountain range of evidence. And that's what the conspiracy theorists want you to do want you to do, right? They don't want you to look at this mountain range of evidence. They want you to turn around and focus on this pebble on the ground named Ray Epps. They also don't want you to look at what President Trump was saying and doing. This is gaslighting on a whole new level. He is literally guilty of all the things he's accusing so-called Ray Epps conspiracy theorists of. It's not about a pebble of Ray Epps, it's about the things that he did and then got away with. And it's also about how the media, and especially the January 6th committee of all things, have turned this man, who again is on video inciting the riot that led to January 6th, as a victim. It's this guy in the media the Democrats who are ignoring the mountains of evidence because it's inconvenient to their narrative. And if we're going to talk about people ignoring what Donald Trump said and did on that day, he told people to march peacefully and make your voices heard. But those words were never once played during the January 6th committee hearings. After former President Trump mentioned Epps by name, harassment and death threats picked up. Right, right. Have you noticed this recent pattern of people in power and in the media trying to avoid accountability by claiming that their critics are causing them to get death threats? If you did, you might have noticed the other pattern of Republicans, conservatives, or generally the targets of the media and Democrats never being excused by claiming that they're getting death threats. If you're wondering what the FBI has to say about all this, for the past two years, it has said nothing. After repeated queries by 60 Minutes, late this past week, the Bureau issued this statement, quote, Ray Epps has never been an FBI source or an FBI employee. Just like everything else surrounding this obvious cover-up, that response stinks. The fact is, the FBI, the media, the Democrats, all of them have a vested interest in protecting Ray Epps. Because if Ray Epps is charged for inciting the riot, then they can't blame Trump. I also noticed that oversight committees have been asking the FBI these questions going back years now. But the FBI never answers, because they're under oath. But when 60 Minutes asks them, they can say anything. And it won't matter. The FBI's statement is purposely vague. Maybe he didn't work for the FBI. Maybe he worked for the DHS or some other department. That still doesn't explain how Rayab somehow avoids any charges. Unless, one, he's working for the government, or two, they didn't charge him so that they could blame Trump, Fox News, Tucker Carlson, Republicans, conservatives, and so on. All right, folks, that's all I can stand for this session. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one. Come <laughs> on.